Hey there everyone, this is Samuel Johnson and welcome back to the Spider-Verse Retrospectives and I want to give a heads up before I start talking about today's comic. I almost did not do this vlog today. I'm not going to go into too many details, but last night my family suffered a loss and needless to say it did shake us up somewhat. It shook me too and even right now I still feels like I have a a hole in my chest so I did not know if I would be able to do the vlogs today because even if it didn't hurt as much this morning as it did last night it would have it, it still felt like it would hurt and it still does but I think I'm at least in a calm enough state of mind that I think I can do this especially since Right now, I think I kind of want some normalcy, just to try and to try and keep me st to try and keep things stable. So, if it looks if it feels like I'm not as into it today as I am with my other videos, I just want to apologize. So, sorry, I'm sorry. Um, so, but with that out of the way, let's discuss for today's comic. What so now that we are done with the Superior Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2089 lead-ins. Today I think it's time we look at the lead-in material. Today I think it's time we check in with our main universe web slinger. As today for the lead-in material, we're going to be taking a look at the Amazing Spider-Man Volume Three, Number Seven. And while this is while this comic is a lead-in for the Spider-Verse storyline, well, it doesn't start out that way. Like with superior, like with the Superior Spider-Man issues. This issue of Amazing Spider-Man actually has two stories. The main one, which focuses on Spider-Man, and a secondary one, which actually does involve Spider-Verse. Since both stories are collected in this trade, I'm going to cover them both, but just I just wanted to give a heads up because we're not going to be getting into the actual Spider-Verse stuff until like later, until later on, so just the heads up. But anyway... The first story is called Miss Marvel Team Up, and it actually opens with, and it actually opens in the apartment of Peter Parker, Anna Maria Marsoni, the real one, as I'm guessing that after Peter got his body back, he and Anna Maria, while well, not being a couple, well, they at least had to talk, they at least were, they at least still stayed living together, especially since, and I'm guessing it, based on what I can tell, Anna Maria is still working at Parker Industries, and on top of that, they also have a guest here, and I should probably talk about this third guest. The third character here is actually another Spidey, so to speak. Her name is Cindy Moon, and her gimmick is that she was another student at Peter's high at the same science demonstration that Peter went to, who was also bitten by the same spider that bit Peter, and as a result, she wound up gaining powers very similar to him. I say similar because while there are some things they have in common, like strength, speed, agility, clinging to walls, and even a spider sense. Well, one major difference is that she can create webbing from her fingers, which she can use to mold into whatever shape she wants. In this case, it's how. She, in this case, she can even use it to form like a suit, which she ends up doing because she act because like Peter, she also has a dual identity and she calls herself Silk. However, the, however, despite her origin story, there. Well, you may be well, actually hearing her origin story. You might be wondering why we haven't seen why you haven't seen her since the original Amazing Fantasy number 15. Well, that's because shortly after she got her powers, she was found by the, by a man named Ezekiel Sims, who I'll get more into detail later, but essentially he was this old guy who ran a corporation called Webcore, which is essentially a cover for a mystical spider society, for a mystical spider society with even Ezekiel also with Ezekiel being at the head of it and also having spider powers. Thing is, a long way ahead of time. Basically, Ezekiel Sims was aware of the of the inheritors were out there, and to try and take precautions against them, he wanted having a bunker built beneath his Webcore building. And well, he want and at one point in the Amazing Spider-Man storyline, he did come to Peter wanting to get him to hide in the bunker, which Peter refused. But for Cindy, well, he got her. He she man he managed to get her into the bunker right away. And so for the last several years. That's where she lived, just maybe all alone in isolation with only the barest things to keep her company. It wasn't. It actually wasn't until shortly before this story that that Peter wound up finding her beneath the bunker, and ever since then she's been trying to reacclimate to the world as it's not the same place that she was used to when she went under. 
On top, which, and on top of that, well, since she and Peter were both bitten by the same spider, they kind of have a bit of a attraction to one another. As every time they're in the same room together, their 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 similar pheromones call, basically make them want to, well, as Peter later puts it, hump like spider bunnies. And as a result, and which is actually what we see in the beginning of the story, as well, while Cindy is trying to scour the web looking for any family members that she can reconnect with, Peter goes in to help her, and they almost have a moment, which results in Anna Maria spray, spritzing them with a water bottle. And it's essentially a regular problem around there, as every 10 minutes or so, they almost get intimate, and she has to keep spraying them to pretty much calm their hormones down. Well, Cindy does get a little upset with this, when Anna eventually she, she does realize that Anna Maria is probably right to keep doing this, and maybe she if she wants to try and figure out where she fits in in the world, she should actually go out and do something. As she gets back, as she webs herself back into her silk costume and decides to go back and go and get, she decides to go out to her day job as she works at a news station called the Facts Channel, and basically she is just a, she pretty much wants to find a place to live by herself, so and basically be with someone that she won't want to hump their brains out every five seconds, so. Pretty much, while well, Peter is a little, Peter's a little saddened by this, though, that this is more, I think this is more, I think it's more along the lines of, well, he wanted to help her out, hence why I'm guessing she was staying with them, but Anna Maria also wants to have a chat with Peter, and the reason for this is because, well, it's Peter Parker. While, while she admires Peter for wanting to do good and be Spider-Man and, so, and help so many people, Remember, a part of the thing with the Superior Spider-Man was that Otto, while in Peter's body, wound up setting up his own corporation, and now that Peter's back in control of his body, he's now in charge of that. So, while she sees nothing wrong with him wanting to go out there, save lives, and help people, he's got more responsibilities as Peter Parker now, and, uh, sa and sadly, because of those responsibilities, Peter has to try and figure out kind of a middle ground between, between great responsibility and and all the responsibility with Anna with Anna even setting up a little radio it's supposed to tap into police frequencies and essentially allow Peter to prioritize what he should and should not be going be going to as there are times when people when the local authorities and, oh, and emergency services can take care of things without superhero intervention which Peter does get a lesson in as they get a bunch of frequencies about ro about robberies, about a robbery, a jewelry store heist, and a fire station, and all three managed to resolve themselves without Peter's intervention. As such, Peter, while not exactly happy to do this, as especially since apparently this was a method that Otto used while he was the superior Spider-Man, well, he does think that maybe there is some merit in trying to essentially prioritize that, especially since our Anna Maria has a point in him having to kind of figure out what he should and should not be doing, especially since he's the head of his own corporation. But immediately, all talks of that kind of get thrown out the window as immediately over the comms they get a report of a super uh, of a of a superpower heist going on. So Peter immediately just bolts out the window and go and goes swinging in his Spidey jammies. So in the meantime, though that. Meantime, though, speaking of said heist, we actually do see we actually do see that as at a hospital, we actually see these men in green suits carrying out what looks like a t this weird green this, not, well, not a green thing. He's actually carrying out. Well, let me check it. I think it was a safe, but don't quote me on that. I just need to be sure about it. It's a container of some sort. Yes, they're carrying out like a container from a hospital and. Pretty much the police are there to stop them, but the thing is, these guys are just the goons, and when the police open fire on them, well, well, all bullets are stopped by the one, uh, the ringleader of all this, a supervillain by the name of Captain Minerva, a Kree scientist who, ha who, as they describe in the story, is supposed to have an early version of the original Carol Danvers Miss Marvel powers, even going around flying in one of her costumes. As such... She's the one in charge of this, and she tells the and she tells her well henchmen to take the crate and get out of there while she deals with the cops. And so they comply, get it into a van, and drive off. But well, it turns out this little heist had witnesses. And as we see, as we see these two kids seeing this, thinking that it's sacrilege that Doctor Minerva is doing what she's doing, and so they update something to their forum. And it's here where the actual title of this story comes into play as we cut to a high school. And meet the other hero in charge of this, Kamala Khan, aka the second Miss Marvel. Um, I'm if you I'm odds are you might know who Kamala Khan is if you've seen the Disney Plus Miss Marvel show, but on the off chance you don't, she was a she is for the most she's actually a character who was invented in the in the in the last decade or so, and 
as the name implies, she's the second Miss Marvel, although her origin has nothing to do with Miss Marvel. Put simply, she is a she is a young superhero fangirl. She obsesses over superheroes, and her favorite superhero is Carol Danvers, Captain Marvel. However, there's also another thing about her. She's an inhuman, which is a thing in the Marvel universe that are, which is a thing in the Marvel universe. These are people who have like a specific gene, genetic code, genetic strain in their body that when they are exposed to something called terogen mists, the the genetic code, the the gene activates, and they end up, they end up get, they essentially wind up going into a cocoon and emerge changed and, and usually the change involves them getting some kind of superpower in some cases they can come up merge in the cocoon completely normal almost looking the same as they did before with only the extra superpower as the only change the only difference but other times they can be drastically mutated and transformed into, into into different creatures in the case of kamala though when she was exposed to the terrigen mists she wound up getting some slight shape changing ability she can make herself bigger smaller grow her fists out she can sh she can sh she can change herself to look like different things different people which how she started the whole superhero thing was that she was originally shape-shifting into carol danvers when she was miss marvel and so eventually and pretty much to try and keep and as such to try and kind of keep the brand going since she was dressed as carol danvers in her old outfit she essentially took the miss marvel name she wound up taking the miss marvel name and began using and began using the title to try and help people in her community as they were dealing with their own issues with a with a with a clone of i think oh, i forgot i, I want to say sir isaac newton but he was a bird i don't know i haven't read the full comic but i at least know that, that but i at least know it was a clone scientist who got whose genetics got crossed the bird it's hilarious and it's hilarious in classic comic book stuff bottom line this is bottom line. She's the other star of the story, and believe it or not, this is my first exposure to her. And from this little exposure, I went and got some of her books. So, nice little, nice little thing. Either way, she and her, she and a friend of hers are in school when they get the text alert about what Doctor Minerva is doing. And well, while she, while Doctor Minerva is a blue-skinned Cree and look and does not look like Captain Marvel, well, odds are that a media outlet seeing her in the costume is going to try and spin the story to say Miss Marvel's gone, that, that Carol Danvers has gone bad. So well, Kamala decides. Well, we we Miss Marvel's got to stick out for for got to stick out for each other, and so she ends up running outside and changes into her Miss Marvel costume before running off to go deal with that to go deal with Doctor Minerva herself. And sure enough, that's where the team up happens as both Spidey and and Kamala end up arrive end up end up stopping the getaway as Kamala ends up ends up stomping Doctor Minerva under her boot, knocks the truck aside, and she now sees what's actually in the crate. It's an inhuman. It's an inhuman cocoon, basically a, po a, a pod, and well, of course she know, and of course Kamala realizes that whatever is it, that there's prop that as odds of that's a pod, there's a person inside, so they must be worried sick. But Doctor Minerva ends up smacking her, but Doctor Minerva, well, she manages to recover and ends up knocking Kamala aside before Spidey manages to arrive. And the instant that Kamala sees Spidey, she just starts fangirling, and I think that's hilarious, especially when she asks Spider-Man personal details about his love life with Carol Danvers, which apparently they dated once. That was funny. But either way, but either way, they manage to reorient themselves to Peter telling Peter telling Miss Marvel, "Look, just follow my lead. We just follow my lead. I'm used to this sort of thing." And so they manage to corner, and so they manage to corner Doctor Minerva. Though they and the henchmen end up keeping an eye on the cocoon, though one henchman's a little hesitant because, well, he didn't know Spider-Man was be would be here, and apparently they have a history. But we don't learn about that now because because Spidey and Miss Marvel immediately start questioning Doctor Minerva about what she's doing, what she's go what's going on, and how. And she reveals that she's actually that the reason she's kidnapping this Inhuman is because she wants to use them for an experiment, and she thinks that the Kree have stagnated somewhat, and she thinks that, that she can graft the inhuman genes onto the onto Kree soldiers, it can transform them into a new warrior, something a next generation, so to speak. And, well, Kamala is justifiably horrified at that, because that means that she's taking people and essentially ripping out their genetic structure, which, yeah, that sounds like they could kill them. And so she thinks that, and so she, and so she proclaims that she's not going to let her do this, which Dr. Minerva responds... I already have, and so she immediately and so she starts glowing as she as she immediately starts changing herself, and the comic ends as we see what the fruits of her labor are as she's metamorphosized into this giant winged monster. So, yeah, yeah, team ups off to a good start, but that's also where. But with that, but now that, that story's out of the but 
that's just one story. What about the next one? The next one, well, like I said, that one actually is what has to do with Spider-Verse, and it's called Web of Fear. And this story actually provides answers to that British Spider-Man that we saw at the end of Edge of Spider-Verse number two. Because, well, this is technically where he gets his start, where he gets his start. You see, this, that Spider-Man is kind of sort of an amalgam between Spider-Man and another hero, Captain Britain. I don't know much about Captain Britain, admittedly, but from what I do know, his civilian identity is a, is a man by the name of William Braddock, and he, and while the name may imply like that he's supposed to be like the British version of Captain America, he's anything but, as apparently their power sets are very different, and while he is based in the UK, rather than being a super soldier, he's an inter, he's like an omniversal intergalactic warrior, because, well, apparently there's an entire team of Captain Britons from across the multiverse who have banded together and have called themselves the Captain Britain Corps, with their whole shtick being that they keep an eye on the affairs of the multiverse and greater omniverse. And, well, the William... And, so, and all of them, in some way, are alternate versions of William Braddock, which, honestly, I think is really cool. I also like their power sets. Apparently, their powers are directly connected to their state of self and, and emotional sense state, which I think is cool. But, either way, that's where this Spidey comes in. This Spidey is this uh, this Spidey is like I said, and technically an amalgam of the two, as his civilian identity is named Billy Braddock, and his spider identity is called Spider UK, hence the Union Jack on his chest. And how the second story comes about is that, Bill is that Billy? Well, he's been sensing that things have been off in the greater universe. I would say it's his spider sense, but later stories state that he actually doesn't have a spider sense, so. Maybe it's like that same bit of paranoia that Avengers Forever Miguel had when Morlin was stalking him. But either way, he th feels like something is wrong in the multiverse, and so he managed to book a room in... I'm trying to remember the name, sorry. Some things really did go over my head when I was reading the story, which is not a good thing. See, this is why I need to take notes. Either way, he was able to he was able to book a room in what they call the, in the Watchtower Scrying, and essentially what it allows someone to do is that it allows them to scan the multiverse for potential problems. And so he has the thing, and so he has the watchtower to essentially scan like a, like a handful of alternate Earths to see, what the, to see what's going on and see if there's any dimensional disturbances. And sure enough, the watchtower does seem to find one on one Earth. And so he has to peek in and see what it is. And sure enough, he finds Morlin as he's in the midst of murdering another Spidey. But not just any other Spidey. You know that show, Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends, where Spider-Man teamed up with the X-Men heroes Firestar and Iceman? Yeah, they're fucking dead. Yeah, they're just dead. And they're brutally slaughtered. Like, like the, the image opens with Spidey talk, saying to Moreland, I can't even describe how what Moreland's done to that, what Moreland has done to Iceman and Firestar. And Moreland just talks about how you really don't know, do you? This world's more, more innocent, naive, naive, but that won't save you before siphoning out his life force and then throwing his body aside. And if you've seen Spider-Man as Amazing Friends, you know they had like a little dog that they that was that they took care of. Well, the dog's okay, but at this point, Moreland is job done, ends up leaving the universe, and the final shot is the corpses of Spidey, Iceman, and Firestar in the midst of what was left of their base, with the dog howling over them. It's yeah, it's fucked up. It's just fucked up, and kind of in this, and it's a similar vein as the other, as the death of the other Spideys. Like, because if you were a fan of the show, guess what? Those guys are now dead. I hope you enjoy looking at their about their dead bodies. Which, yeah, yeah, the audience isn't the only one horrified here, because Billy is too, and he's just and he wants to look at anything else. So he has the scanner continue searching the multiverse for anything very similar to Moreland, and it does find that, and it does manage to find more, as it first ends up tuning into Bricks and Bora on Earth 999, home of the Spider Cat. It's literally just a house cat who's, its world, who's also its world Spider-Man. And that's kind of cool. And essentially, Bora has caught the cat and is rubbing it in Bricks' face, and Bricks says, fine, just, get it, just kill the thing and get it over with. And so Bricks does, and Billy still thinks it's horrifying and asks the th and wants to see in anything else. And so the Watchtower does that using the same search parameters, and the end and he ends up and it ends up showing him the world of Spider-Man Unlimited. Which, if you don't, haven't seen the show, it was kind of sort of a continue. It was it was kind of sort of a continuation slash all slash spinoff slash has nothing to do with 
show of the 90s Spider-Man. And the premise of it was that the Spider-Man is that Spider-Man alongside J. Jonah Jameson, Venom and Carnage wound up getting blasted off to another planet called Alter Earth, which was like Earth, except the greater population were anthropomorphic, super intelligent animals and humans were considered a subclass. And on that Earth, Peter continued doing his Spider-Man shtick, even getting a brand, even getting a new suit made from nanomachines, which I think was pretty cool. Cool. Again, it, I don't think it has. Again, I've heard from Word of God that it really that the show really had nothing to do with the '90s Spider-Man, from the '90s Spider-Man cartoon. But there is. But some people have sometimes made the connection, so I figured I'd make that too. Either way, that yeah, he tunes into that world and not and he sees another inheritor as he's gorging himself, not just on that world Spider-Man, that guy's long dead, but also in the greater population of Alter Earth, since all of them are animal totems because of their anthropomorphic nature, and. We have seen this inheritor before, but I didn't give him a proper introduction. This is Deimos, and he's essentially the strong man of the inheritors, being big, gruff, the elder brother to Morlin, and a lot tougher, usually opting to speak more with his fists in anger and liking to throw his weight around wherever he goes. Essentially, and that's part of the reason why he's why he's on alter why he's continued going on alter Earth, as he essentially sees this world as uh, feeding trough, and just is stuffing, and he's just stuffing his face with the inhabitants, so much so that the other inheritors have to come and get him, specifically, specifically one of his younger siblings named Genix, who is essentially the smart guy of the inheritors, a scientific genius who, who is able, who, using his knowledge of the multiverse, has managed to craft some of the most, po managed to craft very potent, very, te very advanced pieces of technology. And it was even him that created the shackles that bind the Master Weaver and make him serve the Inheritors. And he was also the one that created Karn's Helmet. And, well, he's at, and on top of that, it's because of him that the Inheritors are still technically around, like Moreland. I'll get to that when I get to that. But either way, he's a technological genius. And while he is, while he does have the same capabilities as most of the other Inheritors, He's mostly the guy that likes to so to watch and study, and well, and well, he's been tasked with getting Deimos off this world since well, he's already killed this world, Spidey. They need to find another. They need to go hunt someone. He needs to go hunt another. But Deimos doesn't want to leave. He's again, he's he's like a he's like a kid in a candy store on this world. He's just feasting on everybody. And Genix says, look, you know, Father's parameters are only supposed to hunt spiders. You gotta leave. And Deimos keeps trying to bargain with him, saying, no, come on, just one more, one, no, two, no, no, maybe three. And Genix starts getting exasperated until a device he has starts beeping, and it's apparently it's some kind of omniversal whatever. It's supposed to be a it's supposed to be an omniversal scope that allows him to view other universes, or so to speak. Or in this case, not monitor when they're being watched. In case in point, as Billy is watching the two chat, the thing the thing detects him and it allows Genix to see Billy. And so Genix ends up and so when Genix sees him, he does remark he does remark how he looks British, probably tastes bland, but they'll get to him soon enough. And Billy realizing they're look, they're looking watching him back, cuts the feed immediately and realizes, okay, this is a problem before he gets up before he before he pulls his spidey mask on and goes sweet and goes out to try and warn the uh, to warn the Captain Britain Corps about this threat. Unfortunately for Billy though, there's another threat to the multiverse going on. One that doesn't really have anything to do with the story, but does have influence on a few things that are that occur within it and another book we'll be talking about later. Specifically, something called incursions. I'm not going to get into too much detail about them as this is apparently a thing that was going on in the Avengers books at the same time that this story was going on. But put simply, the incur but put simply, entire realities are dying. Basically, they're colliding with each other, destroying one another, and just being erased. With the inhabitant, with any one that are aware of the threat, either being powerless to stop them or managing to just get out of there before everything goes to hell and it just keeps happening. And so the Captain Britain Corps is made aware of this as the head of the as the Majestrix of the Majestrix of the Captain Britain Corps, well, she feels guilty of not being able to stop it. And so when Billy comes up wanting to tell her about what's going on with the various Spideys in the multiverse, well, she's not interested, which it's not like, it's not like that she can't, it's not like she's going to, like she wants to brush him aside, I think. But the very, but the thing is, she's dealing with like, li with, with an even greater threat. And not, it's not just, because while Billy's threat is, is, is bad, these are just individual parts of the multiverse or people in the multiverse whereas entire realities are dying and now and she want and she wa and Billy wants her to dedicate some forces to his problem over entire worlds and enti and literally millions upon millions of people dying she just tells him to get lost however her 
hold on one second. Sorry, I had to check a name. Anyway, basically, the Majestrix's lady-in-waiting, I assume, or right-hand woman, whatever, her, her name is Lady Roma, she is sympathetic to Billy's plight, and even thinks that maybe the problems are one of the, the problems that, that they're dealing with and the spiders are one of the same. Spoilers, they are not. But either way, she does want to help Billy, and so to aid him on his quest, she gives him a device that will allow him to essentially travel between them, between universes, and she ta and she gives him a task, stating that if the spiders are being hunted, it must be for something truly sinister, and so if he and so he needs to go out there and stop and save the remaining spideys in the multiverse and stop whatever's trying to kill them. With Billy saying that he'll do, that he'll do it before diving headforce into a portal to begin building his own army of Spider Men, which is why we saw, which is why he was viewing Gwen State Spider Gwen at the end of Edge of Spider Verse number two as he was getting ready to recruit her. So that's it. so yeah, that's where things are. So. First, let's talk about the Miss Marvel team up story. This one, like with the, like with other stories here, like with the last, like with the Spider Man twenty and nine issue, is just kind of built. It's just mostly build up. It's a very short story, and mostly it's just here to get all the pieces in place for the t for what for the conference for the superhero stuff, so to speak. It has nothing to do with Spider Verse or anything, but it is just essentially laying down the groundwork for. The story before basically Peter doing his own thing in his own universe, at who and at the moment he's completely unaware of the greater threat that's going on in the other in other universes. He's just go doing his regular thing, fighting bad guys and so forth, and at the same time also dealing with some of the conundrums. Which I think that's another thing the issue does is it showcases more of the issues with Cindy's Moon as she's as she lives with them and is trying to establish herself. So I do kind of like that and the issues that are there. But another little thing I like is kind of the conversation that Peter has with Anna Maria Marsoni as I do kind of like that well she's in like she's in on the secret at this point but she does actually try and talk Peter down and try to kind of get him into to try and get him into to try and get him she's trying to make him realize that there are other ways of being responsible without having to be Spider-Man all the time. After all, like she said, he's got like he's the head of his own company now. He needs to start thinking of his shareholders and employees and so forth. And he's got to learn to start prioritizing things, which admittedly it does kind of go nowhere as they immediately get a report about the, about Ms. Dr. Minerva and all the shit that she's pulling. But at the very least, it is a nice little thing to showcase Peter having to try and find a median and realize that there, he has more responsibilities than just being Spider-Man and that he needs to learn how to balance those lives more equally, which is supposed to be like a regular thing with Peter. But I at least like that they're trying to find ways to address it, especially when Anna Maria sets up that the frequency that frequency to the, the radio to listen in on police frequencies and essentially allow Peter to prioritize what he should and should not be dealing with, which I think is nice. I like it. I like it. But otherwise, though, it is still. Pr but otherwise, though, see, I mean, the rest of the story is just kind of laying down the groundwork, so to speak. As the ending of the of the of the of the, of the Miss Marvel team up story is when is just Peter and and Kamala arriving at the scene, seeing Doctor Minerva as she's kidnapping the Inhuman, and so as they confront her, asking what the hell she's doing, she lets him know, "I'm grafting a human DNA onto Cree DNA. I've already done it myself." And then to demonstrate, she turns into a monster. So it's literally just there to act as the lead-in. The whole, the rest of the story will be continued in the next issue, but for now, it's mostly there to try and continue building hype. So, that's a thing. At the very least, it is still cool to see Sp to see Spidey meeting, meeting the Kamala Khan Miss Marvel, because I love how she freaks out when she sees him and goes full fangirl, like, oh my god, I'm Sp it's Spider-Man. Are we in a Spider-Man? Are we in a Spider-Man team? Am I in a Spider-Man team? This is gonna be awesome! And then she just starts going on about, did you date Miss... Did you date, did you date Carol Danvers? I so ship Spider-Marvel! And he's just like, oh my god, he's got... God, she's got such rabid fangirls. Look, there was one date, and let's leave it at that, okay? Heaven knows she did. It's really admittedly amusing and really fun to see and so seeing the end on top of that it does lay some minor groundwork with the, with the henchman as one of them says that he has history with spider-man so i think that's nice but again the most but again it's mostly just an incomplete story it's just a small piece of the puzzle and really it's there to, and really it's just there to lit and overall it is still pretty cool it is still pretty cool to see how things going it's cool seeing the little hijinks with peter and cindy moon as they have as they have to try and learn to cohabitate i like the conversation with Aunt between peter and anna maria even if it really doesn't go anywhere i like seeing i like it it's cool when peter miss when when peter meets the kamala Thomas marvel it's not, so and i like and the and the how the story ends with dr minerva as she turns into the monster form is a nice little cliffhanger way of ending the story so there you go 
But as for Edge of Spider Verse, Web of Fear, this one I think is I think doesn't even is a better job at fitting more into the Spider Verse thing, especially since we do see or are, are, are given a proper introduction to Spider UK. I do like 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 we don't really know much about him in the beginning, as all we really know is that he's a British Spider Man. That's all we know. He's a member of the Captain Britain Corps, and because of his name, we know he's an alternate version of Captain Britain. But beyond that, there's really it's really just there to just set just just kind of set up his role and everything because well he's one of the spideys that notices what the inheritors are doing and is ready to try and do, and wants to try and do something about it as he begins real as he senses that something isn't right in the multiverse and so he decides to f check it out when he goes to investigate that's when he discovers the inheritors hunting the very various, various spider totems of the multiverse and decides okay i do need to do something about this hence why he goes to the majestrix then gets told to f off before her before her lady in waiting gives him the device then tells and and come and tasks him with saving the various spider men and women of the multiverse so i do kind of like that i like see i kind of and i do like how he investigates it's it, well, admittedly, it is a little hard to see the various spy to see these other Spideys get killed off so hor so grotesquely. At the very least, it is kind of a, it is just little nice little cameos at least. Though, again, I will I do agree with the criticism of the de how the Spider Spider how the Spidey of the Spider Man Amazing Friends world was killed off was rather grotesque especially since Moreland wiped out his whole team in a very horrifying fashion which i'm not going to show you that page because it is just disgusting i'm not going to deny i'm not going to defend that and at the very and so which yeah it's a big slap in the face if you were a fan of that show especially in regard to spider-man unlimited while i know while i haven't seen a lot of spider-man unlimited at the very least i'm aware that that show has fans and i admit that even like the spider-man unlimited costume but to see not all, to see not only that world Spider-Man dead, but to see all the Spideys of the, the not just all the no sorry all the inhabitants of the other Earth being being fed upon too, yeah, that's like a total apocalypse at that point. If, if the world is not dead, if the if more if Deimos hasn't killed everyone on that Earth already, odds are they're gonna have a hell of a time rebuilding after this big strong guy in a fa in a fancy overcoat came and started wasting everybody. So that's nice. Either way, it, it does again serve like a dual purpose. It at least showcases the threat and how it all comes together. But at the very least, it does feel it does feel a bit heavy hand. It still feels somewhat heavy handed in that regard. Though again, I do still like Billy and how he does want and how he does take charge and wants to try and fix it. Again, we don't really know much about him as a character at this point. Really, he all we really know is at this point he's just a British Spider Man and that he wants to help and that he wants to try and stop the inheritors. So. At the very least, it offer, it works as an introduction, but we do still need to build more with him before we can actually see what he's like as a character. So for now, it's really just introduction, and that's all. So that's a so I that I, I'm not gonna call that a flaw because it's because it's a short story too. But at the very least, it is still. But at the very least, it does set him up proper and establish who he is in relation to the story. So I'll give you that. I'll still get. I'll still say they did that that was done right it's and they still have a whole storyline to help build them up so good on them for that and i'll i'll even admit one of these little meetings actually i did find amusing while it did feel a little in bad taste with how bricks and bora play with spider cat i did like how spider cat react to them because as i mentioned it's literally just a house cat it's literally just a house cat that is also that also serves as its world spider person and so when they hold it up, it's literally just a cat in a Spider-Man costume, and it looks just miserable as Bricks is holding it, and to taunt, oh no, as Bora holds it, and as Bora starts taunting her brother with the cat, she starts making it set, making it dance around, and starts acting like it's talking, like, oh no, Bricks is guilty, B Bricks feels bad because he didn't manage to catch me too, oh, I was sad, and the cat just like puts its head down, and is like, oh god, just kill me now, I, it's, I find that amusing, just for the little cat, just for the cat, pretty much just going, oh, fuck this, so... I like that. Otherwise, though, first, otherwise, though, it does, I think it's a good jet way of kind of set, of kind of putting things in motion. It still has offers grand stuff, and while not a lot of character for Spider UK is built up in the first thing, at the very least, it does lay the groundwork for who he is and why and how he gets involved in everything. So I do at least like that, as well as, well, kind of hinting at this stuff with the incursions. Again, it's not too important to the story because, again, that was something that was going on in Avengers. But it is something that will come up later in not only this storyline, but in future comics that we'll be looking at. But so 
yeah, that is something that will come up later. But either way, at the very least, I do like that they acknowledge that in the background. But for but until but it won't be paying off for, for in this story until much later. So we'll get to, so yeah, it's nice to have that established. Otherwise, though, still a, it's a, it's a fine. The comic itself is just fine. First story just there as a, just there to help set up with Peter and Peter and Miss Marvel meeting up and getting ready to face this big face the Doctor Minerva together. And the second story is a good job at, of establishing Spider of setting up Spider UK. Well, as, as a as a as a as a part of the story, not as a character. Well, again, we'll get more to that later. And essentially showcasing how he gets involved in this and how he begins building his own Spider Army to combat the threat of the Inheritors. So, yeah, like that. It's good. So, overall, it's a fun. It's an all right issue. Not great. Not great. Not great. But all right enough in, in setting everything in motion. So, yeah, yeah. Overall, just that's it. So, yeah. I hope I, I hope you've been suitably entertained. Again, apologies if it feels like I wasn't as into it as I normally am, but I do hope you still enjoyed the video. I will hopefully be back on Thursday to talk about this, to talk about the next issue, and again, it'll, it'll probably be later than this because I got because we're gonna have to be doing stuff that day to deal with the loss. I'll, I'm not gonna give too many details because personal, I give too many details. But either way, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that your days are actually are really good and that things go well for you, and hug your loved ones, please. Just hug them hard. Hug them tight and let them know you love them, so, yeah. Sorry to get sappy there, but, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. I'm Samuel Johnson, and I'll see you on Thursday as we look at The Amazing Spider-Man, Volume 3, Number 8. So until then, have a good day, and take care.